Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year to you. Welcome back to Study Acupuncture with me. If this is your first time here, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Richard. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I'm an acupuncturist. What do I do? I make acupuncture educational content that's easy to digest so that you can prepare for the board exam and you can feel really confident in your clinical skills when you go into the real world. If you're subscribed to my newsletter, you would have heard that I am now the father of two kids. So we had our second child right before Christmas, which that was just the best present that you could really ever ask for. And so that means that right now my wife and I were in the trenches with a baby boy and this baby boy just loves to eat. It's actually the complete opposite experience that we had when we had my daughter. Because with her, every time we went to the doctor, we were really anxious because the doctor would say, oh, she's not gaining enough weight, you need to feed her more. But with this guy, he's eating every two hours. He's already outgrowing his newborn clothes and he's really, really just testing the stretch of his newborn diapers. So we're probably gonna upgrade him to size one diapers really soon. So what I wanna say is just thank you all for the wonderful emails, the wonderful comments and the prayers. My wife is recovering really well. Everyone's healthy, everyone's happy, and I sincerely wish the same for each and every one of you. I hope that this new year is bringing you all the blessings, and I hope that you're happy and that you have a wonderful new year. All right, so now what is today's topic? So today's topic is on yin and yang excess and deficiency. Now this is actually a direct request from someone named Michelle on Instagram. Michelle sent me a DM. It said, hello. Thank you for your videos. And do you have one regarding yin and yang excess and deficiency? I could use some help. Thank you, heart. Now, I actually want to thank you, Michelle, for sending me a DM about this because the topic of yin yang theory is really important and it's a foundational topic that you can find everywhere with your evaluations, with your treatments, and honestly, you can find it everywhere in life too. All of these principles that yin-yang theory have, you can find in relationships between people, you can find in the day and the night, the hour and the minutes, the time, you can find it everywhere. So what Michelle is specifically asking about has to do with the four aspects of yin-yang theory. And these four aspects of yin-yang theory are, number one, there is the opposition of yin and yang. Number two, there's the interdependence of yin and yang. Number three, which is what Michelle is talking about, there's the mutual consumption of yin and yang. And then number four, there's the intertransformation of yin and yang. So with aspect number one, aspect number one is that there's this opposition of yin and yang. Now, everything in the world contains some sort of aspect of yin and yang. Nothing in this world, though, is absolutely yin or absolutely yang, but it's a cycle basically where yin and yang, they lead to each other and they're constantly balancing each other. So for example, like day and night. Daytime comes, it's sunny, day is yang. Nighttime comes, night is dark, it's yin. They are basically in opposition to each other. They're opposite ends of a 24-hour cycle where day is going to turn into night, night is going to turn into day. Now, in each of those phases, there's still aspects of each other there. So like as it gets darker, for example, you still see light from the day. So that's opposition. Aspect number two is the interdependence of yin and yang. Now, what that means is that they depend on each other because they can't exist without each other. For example, we literally have the word day only because we have the word night. And if we didn't have night, then we wouldn't have the word day. They don't exist without the other. And then aspect number three, which is what Michelle is asking about, is that there's this mutual consuming when it comes to yin and yang. And so what does this mutual even mean? So mutual is a word that you use to describe some sort of situation or some sort of feeling or even an action where two people or two things, they both experience the same thing. So for example, marriage, there's mutual love there, there's mutual support, there's mutual trust. So these two people experience the same thing. Now with yin and yang, they both consume each other. And that's because yin and yang are constantly trying to balance each other and they're adjusting themselves to find some sort of proportional balance. And according to Chinese medicine, there's four states of imbalance with yin and yang. Just like how water has three states. Water can be liquid, it could be gas, it could be solid. And if you want to be fancy, you can say that water can also be plasma, which is the fourth state. But with yin and yang, there are four states of imbalance. Now, these four states of imbalance are, number one, the preponderance of yin. 
Number two, the preponderance of yang. Number three, the weakness of yin. And then number four, the weakness of yang. Now, to understand these four states of imbalance, we have to understand two things. Number one, we have to understand that these diagrams that I'm showing you here, there is this homeostatic line. That homeostatic line is your north star for whether there's an excess or a deficiency. So that's point number one. Point number two that we have to understand is that for each of these states, we have to figure out first, what is the primary reason that this state even came about? And what secondary cause is happening as a result of that primary reason? So first, let me explain the homeostasis line. So this line is basically your patient's natural resting state. And in a perfect world where everything's perfect, your patient lives a monk-style life in the mountains, they're untouched by social media, they spend every second of the day and every breath meditating and working towards balance. In that case, maybe their yin and yang will be perfectly equal and at the line of homeostasis. But we know that this is virtually impossible and that there's this dynamic relationship between yin and yang. Because yin and yang is constantly moving, consuming, adjusting to find some sort of new balance, or at the very least, live in one of these states of imbalance. So that's the line that you see here in each of these four states. Now, the other thing that we have to understand is that in each of these four states, we have to understand what's the primary reason that this state even came about. Because with this primary reason, it's going to cause a secondary result. And it's just a simple matter of understanding whether it's an excess condition that's causing the problem or whether it's a deficiency condition that's causing the problem. Now, that can be a hard subject to grasp at first, but one really simple example of this is just to think about someone who has dry lips. Me, for example, I have dry lips. So the state is dry lips. Now we have to ask ourselves, what is the primary reason for the dry lips? So on one hand, it could be that the patient, me, isn't hydrating themselves. So I'm not hydrating myself enough. So I'm deficient in hydration. So that's deficiency. Now on the other hand, I could be exposing myself to heat. Maybe I'm out in the sun. Maybe I'm exercising a lot. I'm sweating out all my water. Maybe I did hot yoga. I did not. And I sweat out all of my water. So what happens? I have dry lips. So the first one, the dry lips are caused by a deficiency. So the patient is just straight up deficient in hydration. The second one, the dry lips are caused by an excess cause. I exercised too much. I did not. I was in the hot sun too much. I was not. Now, to take this even a step further, we can define that whatever's going on like this. When yin or yang goes into excess, it's going to cause a consumption of the other. So for example, if yang goes into excess, it's going to consume yin, which is exactly what's happening in the patient who exercises too much or they're in the hot sun too much. Yang is excess or yang is preponderant. And what's going to happen is it's going to cause a consumption of yin. In this case, water is yin. And now this is why I said before that everything in this world has these aspects of yin and yang. If you look outside and you see a puddle of water on the ground and the sun is beating down on it, yang is the excess, the sun is excess. And what's happening to the water? The water is going to evaporate. So yang excess causes the yin, the water to be consumed. All right, so now that we understand that more, let's go into each of these four states, starting with excess yin and excess yang. So on the screen here, on the left side, I have here the case of preponderance of yin. In other words, an excess of yin. Now in this case, you see the yin bar, the blue bar, has gone above the homeostatic line. Now with an excess of yin, what's going to happen? This excess of yin is going to secondarily consume yang. So that's the reason for yang being below the homeostasis line. The yin is consuming the yang. So an example of this is like a patient who's exposed to cold temperatures. The cold is going to invade. It's going to eat up all the heat. So the patient's going to experience full cold symptoms. You can think about this like a room. Now, the temperature of the room is cold. Now, you ask yourself, why is the temperature of the room cold? Is it because there's an air conditioner that's blasting cold air into the room? Or is it because the heater is broken or the heater is not strong enough? So if the air conditioner is blasting cold air into it and the room is cold, that's an example of excess yin. 
and that excess yin is consuming all the warmth that's in the room. Now, if the heater's off or the heater is broken and it's not heating enough, then that would be a yin yang state of weakness of yang. Now, that's this diagram here. So, in this diagram, both blue bars, they're under the homeostatic line. So, neither yin or yang are actually in true excess because they're not above the line. But you can see, one of them is more than the other. Now, if we look at the picture on the left side, the yin bar is more or apparently more versus yang. This is just like the example of the cold room. Now, the heater being off or the heater being broken or weakened would be a yin-yang state of weakness of yang, which is this diagram right here. Now, with this diagram, both blue bars are under the homeostatic line. So, neither yin or yang are actually in true excess. But you can see, though, that one is in fact more than the other. So that means it's an apparent excess, not that it's a true excess. Now, this is just like the example of the cold room that we were talking about before. That room is cold because there's a heater that's off or the heater is weak. So there's a lack of heat resulting in an apparent excess of yin or this apparent excess of cold. So it's not true excess. It's not an air conditioner that's blasting cold air in. So the yin bar isn't above the homeostatic line, but in this case, there's a deficiency of yang. There's a lack of heat that's being produced, which is why there's this apparent excess of yin. We can also term this as yang deficiency or a weakness of yang that's resulting in or secondarily resulting in an apparent excess of yin. And then in our last example here, we have pretty much the same situation where we have yin being less than yang. Now, this yin is not less than yang because yang is excess. Because you can see, the blue line for yang is not going above the homeostatic line. But in this case, yin is deficient and yang is in what's known as apparent excess. So the question then becomes, why has yin become deficient? Now, an easy example of this is just to look at ourselves. Because we can become yin deficient if we are first qi deficient. An example of this is working a 9 to 5 job, studying for school, taking tests, classes, studying, then going home to our kids and doing everything that our family needs of us. And then while we're doing all of that, we're trying to maintain a healthy diet. We're trying to sleep 8 hours. And is that happening? Most likely not. So then what happens? What happens is we become qi deficient. And because we're not replenishing our qi fast enough, our body's going to tap into an alternative energy source, which is yin. And then over time, what happens? We become yin deficient. All right, so that's yin and yang excess, and that's yin and yang deficiency, which that brings us to the end of this first episode of 2024. And here I'll remind you to sign up for my email list. When you're on my email list, you get a fun newsletter that has handy tips on studying, you get study guides, and you just hear more about me. So to sign up for that, go to www.studyhackywithme.com. A pop-up is going to come up and you can enter your email address and you'll be signed up. So until next time, everyone, God bless and happy studying.